Alan Grayson calling out the Tea Party. He, he started out making a comment that the, uh, the Tea Party had a uh, popularity level that was similar to that of the KKK. Uh, Tea Party got pretty upset about that, pushed back on it. And so Grayson just issued a, uh, a fairly lengthy statement. I'll just uh, share a, a piece of it with you very briefly. And, um, and then Jennifer Burke at the Tea Party would like to, <laughs> like to rebut it. Uh, he said, the president visited my home of Orlando and Tea Party protesters shouted, Kenyan, go home. They chanted, bye-bye, Blackbird, and carried posters saying, Obama's plan, white slavery, Imam Obama wants to ban pork, and the zoo has an African lion, and the White House has a lion African. They held a picture of the President of the United States as an African witch doctor with bananas in his hair. Tea Party members have also persisted in falsely characterizing the President as Kenyan and Muslim, despite all evidence, in order to disparage him. Members of the Tea Party have circulated countless altered pictures depicting President Obama and the First Lady as monkeys. Tea Party members have also called my fellow member of Congress, civil rights hero John Lewis, an N-word, and Barney Frank a F-word. More generally, the leader of the Texas Tea Party displayed a poster saying Congress equals slave owner, taxpayer equals N-word. Um, Tea Party members, he actually spelled the word out, of course. Tea Party members of Congress have referred to Hispanics as wetbacks and having cantaloupe-sized calves from picking fruit. Tea Party candidates, including my opponent in the last election, endorsed forcing Hispanics to speak English. He said one could go on and on because there's overwhelming evidence that the Tea Party is the home of bigotry and discrimination in America today, just as the KKK was from an earlier generation. Therefore, I say, if the hood fits, wear it. Jennifer Burke the National Outreach Director of TeaParty.net, the largest Tea Party group in America. Jennifer, welcome to the program. Thanks, Tom, for having me on your show. Sure. So uh, do you take issue with any of the facts, or do you assert that any of these things that Alan Grayson says are not facts? I, you know, I, most of the things you've read I've, I've never heard of. I've, I've, Never, I, I have no idea what he's talking about. I have I've seen all of attended these. Tea Party rallies in 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 Florida and Arizona and Washington State on the liberal side of Washington State, the Seattle area. Never witnessed any signs, any signs like that. I, I don't know whether he saw signs like that in Florida. Uh, I have absolutely no idea. But there have been disparaging things done on both sides of the aisle. Did Alan Grayson say something when? Alan West was depicted as a gold-toothed boxer knocking out white women. I don't recall hearing him defend them. Well, there was or, no organization uh, was that was MSNBC doing... I was watching just the other day, and uh, they depicted Ted Cruz. They had Cruz Wife with uh, the, the gang-type writing on your, on your fingers with fists being shown. So... I don't understand. Um, the, the, there's not a parallel organization to the Tea Party on the left, is there? Well, o- o- Occupy Wall Street is the one that tried to rise up to counter, which uh, Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama blessed right. them and the work that they were doing. So was Occupy them. Wall Street using racist imagery? I wasn't really following Occupy Wall Street. Yeah. Well, yeah, just as, as a serious there, question, I, I, I don't want to turn this... I don't no, I've turn... never been to their... I've never attended an Occupy Wall Street event. So sure. I, I can't speak to that, but uh, there, do you deny that depicting Alan West as a gold tooth boxer is a racist imagery? I think it's deplorable. Depicting, depicting Condoleezza Rice as an Aunt Jemima racist imagery, the things that happened to... to um, yeah, but I, see, I don't think Alan Grayson did that. No, he didn't, but did he condone it? Because the thing is, Depicting the Tea Party. And so, if Alan Grayson movement. doesn't come out and condemn every stupid racist remark by somebody yes. on the left, he he is therefore a racist. I, he's he's condoning it. That's what most of the things you've just mentioned. In fact, I, I don't that you just mentioned, Tom. I've never heard of. I've never How heard do you? Of. I have black. I have black Tea Party friends in Florida, in the South, in in all parts of these United States that have spoken, that have sung, that have attended. And I have not heard of any of these things. I've never seen here in D.C. Just things. last week, we had a Tea Party rally where one you know a guy walked to the White House flag. with a with a Confederate flag. One I mean, one person out yeah. of thousands. Yeah. It, it okay. Well, then 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 Jennifer. It amazes me that the left 
tries to take their racist history and 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 equate that with Alan what Alan Grayson did was equate people who in the KKK was formed by the Democrats. Oh, the Democratic and Party was absolutely a party the party of racism. I mean by the tree in the in the, in the early nineteenth in the early twentieth century. Absolutely. Um right. and, 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 and and they changed in the nineteen sixties and as you I'm sure no, in the nineteen seventies um, Richard Nixon's Southern strategy was to reach out to Southern racists, and that's why when when uh, Ronald Reagan was nominated to be president, the first speech that he gave as a presidential candidate, his first official speech, was in Philadelphia, Mississippi, where those three civil rights workers were murdered. And he gave a speech about states' rights, wink, wink. Um, it, you know, just kicking so his... States' rights now equals racism, so Ronald Reagan was... It certainly did in 1980. In 1980, there was still an ongoing effort to roll back the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. Yes. You mean the voting, the Civil Rights Act of the Democrats? Of the 60s. Um, would try, try, try to stop from happening? No, the, 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 the Voting Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act that the Democrats passed overwhelmingly, Lyndon Johnson signed, that's and that's how the Democrats lost the South. He told Bill Moyers at the time he signed it, you know, if I sign this thing, I'm going to lose, the Democratic Party's going to lose the South for a generation. Turns out it's been two generations. But, but, but Jennifer, right. without playing gotcha, I'm really, I really don't want to play gotcha here. What, what I want to do is ask you just this really simple question. There is, and you know this, there is a huge uh, well of, of or, or pool of white racists in the South, and there's a fair number of them in the North. I grew up in Michigan, and and you know I've been to Michigan militia events back when I was a teenager, and uh, they were they were white racists. They 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 would they would use racist language easily. That that group that slice of people has been used for political purposes by both parties over the years. The Democrats used to be you know they used to be the Democrat they used to be. The Democratic Party used to pander them until the 60s. The Republican Party has been pandering to them since then. What do you think that, and, and it seems like a lot of them have gravitated to the Tea Party. Not to say that the Tea Party is full of racists, but a lot of the racists seem to be gravitating to the Tea Party. What do you think the Tea Party should do about that? I, I, I have no idea what you're talking about, that all the racists have gravitated towards the Not Tea all Party. of them. I, I, or, or that even a large, large, large part. I've been a member of the Tea Party movement since its inception, and I've not seen it. Now, what I have seen is a, a history in the Democrat Party of having a control factor in the, in the, under the guise of compassion for black people. It was Lyndon Johnson that said, that said, and it, this holds true to this day, and these are his words, I'll have, during his Great Society push, I'll have those niggers voting Democrat for the next 200 years. And that's the stronghold that they have had, that, that guise of compassion, let us take care of you. And then I have anybody a no knowledge to, of, of Lyndon Johnson any, ever saying that. Anybody that tries to, 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 to get them to, to see beyond skin color and to see beyond a certain circumstance, the government does not have to be the answer. And, and if you ask me, Democrats constantly pushing big government as the answer to everybody's problem. I was a teacher for 12 years. I witnessed generational welfare and that desire and that belief that they can accomplish more from a young black child being stripped away from them because of what they were being fed by the left. Right. That is the bigotry and racism in this country. Well, it's not always productive. I'll, I'll grant you that. Um, Lyndon Johnson did cut poverty in half in the United States, both in the poor black and the poor white communities, and, and set the stage for an emerging black middle class in the in the 80s and 70s, and 80s, how and are 90s. Black sparing under Obama right now. Black unemployment is higher. Oh, it's a disaster. 32 years of Reaganomics has ripped the guts out of our economy. Jennifer Burke, hang on just a second. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Jennifer Burke, you can uh, you can read your website over at TeaParty.net. Jennifer, thank you for being with us. 